Hey everyone, welcome to our Asset Management Friday segment of the Passive Income Through Multifamily Real Estate Podcast. I'm your co-host Kyle Mitchell, also joined by Gary Lipsky. This segment is focused on educating operators, building better systems, and becoming a best-in-class operator. Since we're also live on Facebook right now, make sure to type in any questions you have in the comment section below. Also, be sure to check out our Facebook group, Passive Income Through Multifamily Real Estate. All right, today on the show, we have Andrew Campbell. Welcome and thanks for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. If you could start by telling the listeners a little bit more about yourself and what you currently do. Uh, yeah, so I'm a co-founder at Wildhorn Capital, a uh, multifamily operations group in Central Texas. We've got about 1,800 units, uh, kind of all value add, and been very focused on uh, asset management in the last month, specifically with all the coronavirus excitement. Well, welcome, Andrew. Let's talk about renovations management. Do you manage all the renovations or someone from your property management company uh, does that? Uh, we do all the construction management in-house. Um, we've got my, my partner's backgrounds, kind of structural engineering. And so we've, we've brought that in-house um, and I've actually built out a pretty good machine where we're, we've sourced some product from uh, China and overseas and kind of warehouse it here and then move it around across the portfolio as needed. All right, so are you bringing like a whole container worth of like cabinets or talk a little bit about the whole process and, and your savings? Yeah, so that you know, we it, it's nice because it streamlines, and we know we're working with similar product across all the assets. Uh, so we'll buy in bulk flooring uh, as an example, of, you know, vinyl flooring, and and we'll kind of deploy it uh, across as, as needed. Uh, light fixtures, uh, you know, fixtures, I guess, sinks and and things like that. Really, the only thing that that's going to be super specific to an asset would be like granite countertops. You need to go measure those specifically and then get those ordered. Uh, but we're able to to do that and it allows us to be really efficient too. Um, you know, once we close on a new deal, example, we closed just right before all the coronavirus madness, we closed on a deal in Austin and we're, we're waiting to start renovations, just letting things settle down. But we have the product on hand and are ready to go uh, as soon as, you know, we decide that, that the market is is ready. And since you guys are buying it direct from China, what, what kind of savings can uh, an operator uh, get, uh, you know, are you talking 10%, 20%? Yeah, we've been somewhere, I think, kind of 10 to, to 25%. It really depends on the, the, the line item, um, you know, but I, I think let, let's call it 20% uh, average on, on sort of a, a unit turn. Um, and I think some of the advantages, it's, it's really there's the cost savings, but then there's just, there's the familiarity. And I think, you know, we don't do the work ourselves. We obviously have a GC, but they know the product that we're going to use across different assets. So it, it, there's, there's familiarity there and it's just, it's rinse and repeat, you know, hey, this, this surface puck light, uh, is the same, you know, across every asset and, and they know how much, how long it's going to take to use, et cetera. I know a lot of people use their third party property management companies to kind of manage that, uh, the renovation products. How do you guys make it seamlessly between, between them and you and the GC? You can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's really communication. Um, and we started out that way and had a, our property manager doing it and just found that they, they, they just weren't that good at it. And, and it was really expensive. You know, they were charging 10%. Uh, we charge 5%. So we're charging the property less and do, do a better job. But it's really, you know, our team as the asset manager, talking with the on-site manager, kind of looking at, you know, upcoming vacancies and, and what, the, what the renovation schedule looks like. And then the GC, who we've got a really good relationship with, kind of all three communicating. And a lot of times it's the GC and the onsite manager talking directly and saying, hey, this unit's you know, on vendor key, ready to be turned. You've got two weeks to get it done. It, it gets back to them. So it, it's, it's just a communications game. And I think that's one of the benefits of having sourced it already. It's on site. It's in a, in a container. It's just a matter of those two syncing up so we can get in and, and get things done quickly. Right. Talk about your, you know, your usual top three, the biggest bang for your buck renovations that you do and, and the timeline that's involved as well. Um, so I think the, the, the biggest bang for your buck, I think for us would probably be flooring. Um, you know, we're a group that does vinyl flooring. We do it throughout the, the, the unit, including bedrooms, living rooms, and, and on upper floors. So I think there's a lot of debate kind of in the, in the world now about the, uh, do you keep carpet in the bedrooms or do you put it on upper floors for noise? Uh, we do it throughout. I think number one, we feel like that shows better. Uh, it kind of more modern what people want, but also from a long-term ownership standpoint, it's over the cost of two or three turns. We're not going to have to replace carpet or clean it as much. Uh, but, but flooring, I think, makes it a big, big difference. Uh, paint, you know, it's updating the paint scheme. If you walk into a place that's kind of got brown or beige walls, 
particularly if it's a kind of 80s deal, it's got eight foot ceilings, you know, lightening that up with a, a really lighter color, um, there, you get a good bang for your buck on that. Uh, and then lighting, you know, we, I talked to mention these surface pucks that we're using, but they're, they, they look like recessed cans. So we rip out every single, you know, fixture that, that exists, even like a dining room and are putting those cans in their LED lights. Number one, so they put off a lot of light, they really brighten up the space. And I think our general goal is to lighten and brighten the space and open it up, you know, so we will get into taking away upper cabinets and lowering walls and the kitchens and countertops. But I think b- biggest bang for the buck, I'd say flooring those puck lights and, and paint. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I, I don't see too many of those uh, puck lights in, uh, in apartments. People usually don't touch that area. So that's pretty unique for or what you guys are doing. Um, is there, I, running- I love them and, and sorry, sorry to cut you off. I love them, but they're, cause they don't require any new lighting. It's not, it, it's just a fixture. So anywhere there's already one, you can rip it out. You don't have to go in and, and do any extra electrical work. Uh, and it, it makes a big difference, particularly if you're in like an eight foot ceiling, you know, type of apartment, just clean it up, open it up as much as possible. Yeah. And they're, and they're relatively cheap too. So. Real cheap, real cheap. Is there a renovation that you're doing that you stopped doing that just wasn't bringing the, the bang for the buck um, anymore? Nothing that we've stopped. And some of that gets pretty asset specific, you know, like the differences if, you know, framing a bathroom mirror, for example, or, you know, if you're going to come in and, and resurface tiles and in, in bathrooms or put in new tiles, et cetera. Um, you know, we will tweak kind of along the way in, in assets and see what really is working, but there, there hasn't been sort of a uniform thing that we've stopped because we haven't seen a, a return. And, and you guys are buying in bulk. Do you guys reassess the level of interior renovations you're doing for a project or, you know, once you have that business plan, you've bought the materials, you're, you're, you're just going to follow through on what, whether it's a hundred or 150, you know, throughout. Yeah, I mean, generally, you know, we're buying, we're not buying thousands of, of units worth of product at a time. You know, it's, it's usually kind of a hundred units worth. Um, and so that'll be spread across the, the portfolio. And again, where it's, it's a puck light's going to go, you know, no matter what, what unit that is. And we're also pretty, pretty focused on the type of assets we buy. So, you know, it's not like we're going to go from a 1980 deal to a 2015, you know, it's, it's going to be kind of late eighties, early two thousands and, and the stuff that we do source would be applicable across anything we might buy and you're focused on on b class typically or yeah kind of the b b to a minus uh you know so b b plus you know looking for good good assets and good in good locations it's been our our focal point and what types of you know challenges you guys face you know when you're doing a value add renovation that uh, a, a newbie sponsor should be aware of i mean i i think the scope of work with, with your GC, you know, and making sure it's really tightly defined and, and that you guys are communicating and that it, as those first couple of units on any specific asset, you're really inspecting uh, their work. Even if it's a group you have a long standing relationship, which we do, uh, hey, every, every asset's going to be different. So what are they finding as they're getting in there? And if we are doing any sort of demo work and taking out upper cabinets, you know, is there, is there any, any gotchas that we need to be aware of so we can kind of be adjusting scopes and budgets? Um, so I think really being on top of it at the beginning of the, of the process, both as you're defining the scope, but then as you start that execution to make sure it's, it's sort of unfolding like you think it should. Yeah, I agree that that is an absolute must. I'm going to pass it to Kyle to, uh, to bring us home. All right, Andrew, we ask every guest this last question. What is your asset management superpower? Uh, I think communication, you know, just staying on top of, of it. And, and so we, we know all of our, our managers, uh, you know, very well. We text with them. We talk to them. We know the, the regionals. But I think being a good asset manager is about being a good communicator with the, your eyes and ears on site, which is your management team, uh, so that you can then make decisions for, for in, in the best interest of the business plan. Awesome. And I actually have one more follow-up question. Do you have any type of reporting tools that you use in, uh, with your general contractor to keep track of all these renovations? How do you track those things? And what is the time frame you like to see on, on the turns? Yeah, so we have a two-week turnaround time uh, from the time that they're, they're giving it on sort of on vendor key to the time it needs to come back. Um, and again, a lot of that is communicating up front so that they know, you know, 30, 45 days ahead when units are going to become available so they can plan according to that. Uh, the tools we use are just Google spreadsheets, you know, so we've got access, the GC's got access, the onsite management team has access, and it's, it's just a separate tab on our normal asset management. So for every asset we have, there's, you know, 
here's our, our, our data sort of dashboard. We have a separate sort of construction uh, oriented one. So we're all know what's happening and, and there's no, I didn't see this. We can all see that it. it's real time. Awesome. All right. Well, Andrew, thank you for coming on the show and talking to us about managing renovations. Today, I learned a couple things. Uh, make sure you're focused on your renovations. You have a set plan. Uh, the biggest bang for your buck has been flooring, painting, and lighting. And we're definitely going to be looking into those pucks because I like those. And then making sure you stay on top of your uh, general contractor. Gary and I know, you know, if you go in there and you just trust that they're getting the units done without taking a look at them, you can be surprised when you go in there. And uh, it's really important to, to really go see those first few renovations to make sure they're to your standard. So uh, if you can tell the listeners more about where they can find out about you. Uh, yeah, our company is called Wildhorn Capital. Uh, our website's wildhorncap.com. Uh, you can go in there and get, get all the information about us and connect and would love to love to talk asset management anytime. Perfect. All right. To everyone listening in, thank you very much. If you like this episode, please head over to iTunes or Stitcher and give us a like, subscribe, and review so we can continue to grow this podcast. And we'll talk to you next week. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in. We really appreciate your support. If you're interested in learning more about APT Capital Group and speaking to someone on our team, click on the link and schedule a call with us. We're here to help and we'd be excited to speak with you and get to know more about you and your goals. Talk to you soon.